So I am not feeling well. So today's horribly edited video is going to be fairly quick and to the point. So this is Cogs' enclosure. Um, it is very, very grown, it's very pretty. There is no Cogs in here right now because we are going to be moving this enclosure from upstairs in our dining room to downstairs in the snake room. Um, so he is currently downstairs already in a tub. So yeah, we can show you how we move a planted bioactive enclosure, or at least attempt to. So, do you want to talk about game plan? We can talk about game plan. This is our little wine corner, by the way. It's nice, right? Um, so... Our first... This is what we're going to try first to oh. see if it works, because we don't want to completely empty out like the planted bioactive. Yeah, because um, the plants are doing really well. Yeah, but it is a little heavy, and like I said, I am not feeling super great, so I am also not feeling super strong today. Um, so kind of heaving it downstairs on its own might be a little... A little tricky. A little tricky. So yeah. what we're going to try instead is... Step one, we are going to take everything off of it and take doors off and all of that stuff, get it as movable as it can be. And then we're going to try and bring in a flat moving dolly um, and just pull it off of the stand that it's currently on and put it onto the moving dolly right mm -hmm. here in the dining room. Yep. And then from there, we're going to try and roll it out the front door. Here, I can show you. So one thing about our house, we love, we love our home. We love where we live, but the dogs are going to run outside. <laughs> this is our front door. So there's a little lip and then another little lip, and then a little bridge. And then our our land is kind of hilly. So, oh, Cleo, excuse you. So we need to roll it like down that way and then go around the house to the back door where we can bring him into the snake room. So, so we're gonna... we, we've done similar with this furniture alley before. Mm -hmm. um, so I think once we get it onto the flat grass, we, we should be in pretty good shape. I'm going to try and get as much filming done as possible while also helping to move this enclosure. So let's, yeah. uh, let's see what happens. Off we go. Off we go. All right. So obviously we can't move it without getting all of this stuff from on top of this enclosure cleaned off. So we're going to do that really quick and take the glass out. All right. So the top is all cleared off. The glass is out and these cords go into the enclosure. There's like the probe and the radiant heat panel and a couple of the lighting cords. So we're just gonna kind of move those with the enclosure. And we also moved the table. Yeah. So we have a little bit more runway room. runway room. Yep. So Cogs is in here right now. He's actually a very good boy. He's hanging, he's in his water dish because that's how he does. So I literally just moved him in his heart. Hi, buddy. He's like, what the heck? Good job, bud. So he'll be fine in there. It's nice and warm in the snake room. So he'll be nice and cozy until we get his house moved. We can move him back in. So the reason that we are moving him is one, he was really only intended to stay upstairs in our dining room for the first few months in quarantine since we got him. Um, he's been with us for over a year. So he is due to be moved anyway and upstairs whenever you walk by um the enclosure shakes a little bit so I think that will help kind of calm him down a little bit and then he also really doesn't like the animals like the dogs and the cat that are upstairs so I'm hoping having him down here I'll be able to work with him a little bit more consistently and start him from a more like secure comfortable situation all right it took some finagling but we got it off of that stand onto this one. This stand, by the way, is a cheapo aquarium stand from, I think we got it from Petco. Petco, PetSmart, one of those. Yeah, one of the big box yeah. stores. But Jody um, kind of finagled it to be able to hold this enclosure because yeah. it would it would not have done well without. So he actually installed a... Um, plywood. Ply, yeah. yeah. A plywood platforms on it widen the surface area yeah so he literally just anchored it on there and it it worked really well so it's really sturdy because it's meant to hold an aquarium mm -hmm. right which are super heavy um it just was not it quite, was too narrow not quite, yeah wide yeah. enough so 
yeah, deepening the base, it has held up pretty well for, geez, a year and a half he's been here, right? Yeah, something like that. A while. All right, so now we get to attempt to wheel it. All right, off we go. It's really easy on flat wood surface, so we'll see what happens when we get to the grass. This moving dolly we got from, I think, Harbor Freight for like $30, and it's absolutely the best $30 we've ever spent for wheeling around enclosures. It's Indeed. super sturdy. Mm -hmm. All right, so Jasper, get out of there. Jasper. Ah. <laughs> so we got it moved from the dolly by the front door to the lawn. So now we're just going to lift it back up onto the dolly and wheel it downstairs. Wheel it downstairs. Yeah. Could this potentially be easier? No, I'm not going to say it because I'm going to jinx it. Never mind. Okay. By the way, two quick pro tips when you're moving tanks. Number one. You don't think you need gloves, use gloves. The edges of PVC tanks can be sharp and if you have to carry them any distance, that'll cut into your hand over time. It's uncomfortable, just use gloves. Number two is always bundle up your wires. Um, really, really problematic to be carrying a big old four by two tank or however big it is and all of a sudden your wires fall off and you're tripping over them. Um, just a little safety tip for both you and the tank. Also, Abby made a comment about the face I'm making. I'm not angry about these pro tips. I'm just squinting. I'm looking into the sun. <laughs> okay, so we ran into a little bit of a hiccup with the dolly. So we're switching to the very nifty pallet jack that we bought off of Garrett at Retail Reptiles. This has been a amazing piece of equipment to have. Um, so we're gonna transfer that enclosure onto that and then attempt to wheel it down. Sorry, I was just laughing at Cleo. Do you have any more angry pro tips before we go? I'm not angry, I was just squinting. <laughs> All right, pallet jack transfer successful. We are cinch strapping it down just to make sure that it does not fall off the pallet jack. Extra while precaution. It. Extra precaution, yep. What, what does it say? An ounce of preve prevention is worth a pound of cure? Indeed. Look at Cleo over there. Cleo, are you cozy and sunbathing? All right. All right. Off we go. Off we go. But this pallet jack maneuvers surprisingly well over grass. All right. So this is the mildest slope to get from our front yard to our backyard. So he's going to maneuver it down that way, and hopefully it doesn't it doesn't squish you. Definitely go backwards if you're doing something like this because it's way easier to break something that's coming towards you than something that's trying to move away from you. Oh, for sure. It would have gotten away from me a long time ago. Yeah. I tried to go forward. Cool. On our back doors right there. Go us. All right. So it is at the back door. Um, we moved the trolley back down this way. To the basement and we're going to now walk the enclosure from the pallet jack onto the dolly because I said trolley earlier it's a dolly um because picking it up off of these tile floors is a pain in the butt but picking it up from the dolly is way easier okay this is successfully successfully <laughs> successfully moved downstairs um so let me show you where we're going to wind up putting this bad boy so we're gonna put Cogs in here. This is our nursery, so he'll be hanging out in here with the Stella babies and with in Indy. <laughs> Made a mess. Um, so he's gonna go up on this half of this shelf here. So we're going to reorganize this. Um, we were doing some medical stuff with our little prolapse baby um, this morning. So we're gonna clear off all of that stuff and um, yeah, install his enclosure up here. I have been organizing the shelf upstairs to move his enclosure, but Jody wanted to take a quick break to do a snake and bake. So this is a loaf of lemon oregano sourdough that I have been proving in the fridge overnight. It is looking utterly wonderful. And so we are about to throw it into a 450 degree Dutch oven get a nice crusty artisanal bread. I'm gonna give it a nice deep score because you want a good ear. There we go. For those of you who don't know, 
Jody developed a passion for making sourdough over lockdown, and it just it, it kept on going. It stuck. It stuck. And I unfortunately have no idea what his bread tastes like because I can't eat anything with gluten, so that really sucks. But it always smells really nice. So that is your snake and bake break for today. We should start doing this more because it's silly. We should. All right, this shelf is all nice and clean. So we'll have half of the shelf still free for like packaging and business stuff. Um, so now we're gonna move that enclosure from there to up here and get it all set up. Success. I'm just gonna wire it up and I'm gonna trim some stuff <laughs> while I have it open and get him back in there. All right, so his enclosure is all set up. I still need to put the glass in, but I did go in and remove all of the tradescantia. I think I'm pronouncing that correctly. Like, look at that. That was completely covering the floor of his enclosure, um, which was making it a little bit harder to spot clean. So I did remove those guys and then look at this purple arrowhead look how much it's vined like crazy so i'm gonna give this a nice watering and get the glass back in and then get cox back in here all right it is moved i'm gonna get him back in here so that's definitely way quicker than trying to remove all of the plants and all of the soil and then move it and then replant it so yeah that worked out really nicely all right, so I'm gonna see if I can coax him. He didn't want to come out of his water dish, and I'm working on choice based. So I'm trying to get him to go back in his house on his own. Come on, bud. Can you see? Oh, there he goes. Good job, buddy. Go check it out. Good job, dude. Good boy. You can climb up on your little perch. He does have a lateral crease on the first about eighth to a quarter of his upper body it was just he developed it shortly after I got him not sure why it doesn't hinder him at all but let him go good job buddy oh it looks so much better getting all of the inch plant out of there yeah good job sir go get cozy <laughs> Hopefully being down here will help him feel much more secure and willing to be a little more curious. Good job, buddy. Do you want to, can you get your butt the rest of your way out? I'm not going to touch your tail because you hate it. I don't want to have a negative interaction with you. Yeah, I don't want to startle you. I swear to goodness. Oh my God, but you have like, five inches of your butt in the water. Can you move it? All in good time, I suppose. I'm still standing here waiting for him to get his butt out of his water dish. But <laughs> um, while I'm doing that, I just wanted to say thank you for tuning in. Um, we're gonna, I need to fix my glasses, sorry. Okay, um, I still need to drive to Baltimore. So yeah, uh, I have no idea if anyone will need to use this information ever, but this is what we were doing today. So this is what I recorded. Um, thanks so much for watching. Thanks for tuning in. All of the links to all of the things are in the caption and I'll catch you next time. Bye. Oh my gosh, you're almost there. Come on, bud. He's being very calm, I'm impressed. Yeah. Especially considering you were in your uh, tub. Good boy. All right, Anna moved his out. Yeah.
right. Fresh water. Oh boy, buddy. Take care of cogs. Nice clean enclosure.